10 interesting things about ecosystems. An ecosystem is a community. It, concludes, it includes all of the living things in a certain area and the environment in which they live. Ecosystems are made up of plants, animals, bacteria, soil, rocks, minerals, and water sources. Some ecosystems are small, like a vegetable garden on a farm or in your backyard. Others are vast, like an entire desert, desert or rainforest. All of the plants and animals that live in an ecosystem together rely on each other to survive. Here are 10 interesting facts about different types of ecosystems. Coral reefs are the rainforests of the sea. Coral reefs are complex underwater, underwater ecosystems. Some people call them the rainforests of the sea. The corals look like rocks, but actually they are animals. They have hard skeletons like clams. Coral reefs form a base for lots of other creatures to live. You'll find crabs, sea stars, worms, clams, jellies, sea turtles, and lots of fish living in coral reefs. Half the world's species live in tropical rainforests. Tropical rainforests are near the equator, the imaginary line that circles the middle of our planet. It's almost always warm and wet near the equator. This is good for growing the lush plants and trees that live in rainforests. Half of the whole world species or types of living things inhabit tropical rainforests. It's a very busy ecosystem with many kinds of plants, animals, fungi, and other tiny forms of life. Many of these creatures and plants live here and nowhere else. To live in the desert, to have to save water. In the world's many, in the world's many deserts, there is very little rain. The land is very, very dry. Here, living things have creative ways of finding and saving water. Cactuses are very good at storing water and can live without rain for months. The kangaroo mouse, which lives in the Nevada desert, never needs to drink water. It can get all of its water from the seeds it eats. Grasslands are all around. Every continent except Antarctica has grasslands. These are areas with medium rainfall. You'll find many different types of tall grasses, herbs, and flowers all mixed together in grasslands. From the savannas of Africa to the prairies of Kansas, grasslands are home to many different animals too. They live in the soil, feed on the grass, or eat the animals that eat the grass. In the United States, grassland animals are buffaloes and cows. In Africa, it's gazelles, lions, and elephants. Freshwater ecosystems have rare species. Ponds, lakes, streams, and rivers are home to lots of different species that can't live in salty ocean water. These freshwater ecosystems are home to some amazing creatures. There are many kinds of frogs, fish, and bugs. There are also rare animals, like river dolphins in Asia and South America. In North America and Europe, there are beavers. In Australia, there are platypuses. In the tundra, life is tough. In the tundra, it feels like winter all the time. Tundra occurs near the North and South Poles of our planet. We call them the Arctic or Antarctic tundra tundras. There is also tundra at the top of the world's tallest mountains. The tundra is a place, hard place to live. Still, some animals and plants survive there. The plants include short and hardy shrubs and mosses. In the Arctic tundra, there are po polar bears, foxes, and reindeer. In the Antarctic tundra, there are seals and penguins. The bottom of the ocean has thriving communities. The bottom of the ocean, there are several underwater volcanoes, small vo underwater volcanoes. These are called hydrothermal vents. They spew scalding hot water, gases, and chemicals upward into the sea. 
It may not sound very nice to live next to one of these vents, but some animals love it. Giant tube worms over six feet long, clams and shrimp, all call these vents home. Wetlands are home to baby fish. Swamps, marshes, and bogs are type of wetlands. Wetlands can have fresh water, salt water, or a mixture of both. Lots of animals lay eggs in wetlands. It's a great place for the babies to hatch and grow. Wetlands are also home to many different kinds of insects like dragonflies. Boreal forests are home to lots of trees. Across much of North America, Europe and Asia, you will find many boreal forests. In these regions, the weather is not too hot and not too cold. Boreal forests are big and their trees are green all year round. The trees have needles instead of leaves. Animals like bears, porcupines, and eagles make combs in these forests. There are ecosystem even in big, ecosystems even in big cities. Big cities around the world have interesting ecosystems too. There are many animals that share living spaces with people near roads, houses, and buildings. In many cities, raccoons, coyotes, possums, skunks, foxes, birds, and all sorts of insects are common neighbors. In some cities, people, people even build wildfire fire cross, wildlife crossings. These are special bridges over the road that animals can use. It lets them move between places without getting hurt by cars. What is an ecosystem? An eco ecosystem is made up of all the living and non-living things in an area. The living parts include plants, animals, and insects. The non-living parts include water, rocks, soil, and sand. Swamps, prairies, oceans, and forests are all examples of ecosystems. There are usually many different kinds of life in a single ecosystem. A grassland ecosystem, for example, contains much more than just grass. It includes other plants, mammals, insects, and earthworms. It also includes many tiny living things in the soil. Three roles for living things. Each living thing in an ecosystem has a role to play. The three main roles are producer, consumer, and decomposer. Green plants are producers. They make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. Animals, including humans, are consumers. They eat or consume plants or other animals. Bacteria and other living animal, living things that cause decay are decomposers. Decomposers break down the waste products and dead tissue of plants and animals. They return nutrients to the soil. These nutrients help new plants grow. Producers, consumers, and decomposers depend on one another and provide nutrients for one another. This is called a food chain. Of feeding levels. A food chain describes the order in which matter and energy move through the feeding levels of an ecosystem. The levels of a food chain are basically the same across all ecosystems. The first level is the producers. After that is the consumers. Sometimes consumers are further divided into primary consumers, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers. The final link in all food chains is the decomposers. The decomposers break down dead organisms and natural waste. The consumers at the top feeding level of a food chain are called top predators. They have no predators hunting and truck trying to eat them. Instead, their population size is controlled through competition. They have to compete with one another for food and other resources. Energy flow. The main source of energy in almost all ecosystems is the sun's energy. As energy moves through the ecosystem, 
much of it is lost all at each feeding level. It escapes as heat. That is the main reason why new food chains have more than five feeding levels. Diagrams called energy pyramids are used to show the flow of energy from one feeding level to the next in a food chain. Most ecosystems have more than one food chain. Food chains overlap. They connect to form a food web. Recycling nutrients. Many nutrients are constantly cycling through an e ecosystem. They include water, carbon, and nitrogen. A nutrient is something that helps living things grow. Nutrients from soil enter into plant tissues. When consumers eat the plants, the nutrients enter the consumer's tissues. Consumers that are eaten transfer the nutrients on to the predator at the next feeding level. Consumers that are not eaten die and transfer nutrients into their decaying tissues in their decaying tissues to the decomposers that feed on them. The decomposers recycle these nutrients back into the ecosystem. They transfer the nutrients back into the soil and air where the nutrients become available to producers. A delicate balance. An ecosystem's health depends on a delicate balance. This balance must exist between all of the numbers, members of the ecosystem and their surrounding environment. If something disturbs the balance, the ecosystem and all its members might suffer. Natural things that can disturb ecosystem systems, including a changing climate and natural disasters, and natural disasters. Human activities that can disturb ecosystems include polluting and clearing land for farms or buildings. Humans are also responsible for many invasive species. An invasive species is a living thing that spreads through an ecosystem where it did not exist before. Invasive species can threaten the plants and animals that originally made up the ecosystem. For example, Burmese pythons were brought to Florida as pets. Some pythons escaped and began reproducing in the wild. Their skill at hunting has decreased the number of wood rats and storks in the area. This upset the balance of the natural ecosystem. What we lose when animals become extinct. According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, more than 31,000 species of animals and plants are under threat of extinction in 2020. The real number of species in danger is, suspect, is suspected to be much larger. In 1964, the IUCN established a red list of threatened species. They began compiling data gathered worldwide. However, the IUCN has only been able to look at 106,000 species. That's a small percentage, percentage of the 1. million animal species and 300,000 plant species that scientists have named. One intergovernmental report of the biodiversity problem estimated that extinction threatens up to a million animals and plant species, known and an unknown. The biggest threat, humans. Habitat loss is the biggest threat facing most of the animal species. It is driven primarily by humans developing land for housing, agricultural, and business. Fishing and hunting also threaten animal species. Even if humans do not destroy an animal's habitat entirely, they can change their habitat so much that the animals cannot adapt. Fences can break up grasslands. Logging can cut through forests, breaking up migration routes. Pollution makes rivers toxic and pesticides kill many creatures. Larger global threats are a problem too. Trade species of dis spread, trade spreads disease and invasive species from place to place. Climate changes will eventually affect every species on earth, starting with animals that live in colder regions. All of these threats lead directly or indirectly back to human, humans and our expanding footprint on the planet. 
Most species face many threats. Some can adapt to us, others will vanish. Threat, disease. Since the 1980s, a fungal disease called Citriomosis has made a major threat for amphibians, especially frogs. The disease attacks the skin, frog skin and ultimately stops its heart. Human food and pet trading networks spread the fungal disease across the world. It has severe, severely harmed global amphibian populations. More than 500 amphibian species, mainly frogs, have been affected. And of these, 90 species may be extinct. Threat, invasive species. The tegu is a gray, blue-gray bird that lives on the island in the South Pacific. Like many island species, the tegu is under threat. In the late 1700s, European settlers and their animals arrived on the island. Their arrival seriously affected the kegus. They fell prey to the European animals, such as pigs, cats, dogs, and rats. These animals were invasive species. An invasive species is a species of plant or animal that is not native to an ecosystem. It comes from a different place. These species are usually introduced to their new environments by chance or mistake. Due to the arrival of invasive species to the island, fewer than 1,000 kegus survive today. Threat, fragmentation. Fragmentation is the breaking up of large forested areas into smaller areas. These small sections are usually separated by roads or buildings. Fragmented land can disrupt, disrupt an animal's habitat. Let's look at an example. The Dama gazelle was once widespread across the Western Sahara in Africa, but now there are fewer than 300 damas combined in Mali, Chad, and Niger. Their range is broken up by grazing lands for livestock. The Dama gazelles are also at risk from hunting. Threat, habitat loss. Butterflies can fly long distances and feed on many types of flowers. Either in their lives, they are caterpillars and they eat the plants that they had earlier in their lives, they are caterpillars and eat and they eat the plants that they hatch on. As those plants are lost to development or farming, butterflies disappear. Threat, poaching. Early in the 20th century, perhaps 100,000 elephants roamed across Asia. Since then, their population in the wild has likely been cut in half. Poachers or illegal hunters kill the elephants, not only for their ivory tusks, but also their meat and skin. Threat, deforestation. For tree dwelling lemurs, there's no life without the forest or without Madagascar, their only home. Yet the island nation has lost 80% of its trees to development, charcoal production, and agriculture. Lemurs are squeezed into limited protected areas. 38 lemur species are now critically endangered. On the brink, mammals are the best studied groups of animals. Fossils show that the background rate of extinction should be low for mammals. The background rate was the standard rate of extinction in, early, in Earth's history before humans became a driver of extinction. The fossil record suggests that only one mammal species should disappear every 1,000 years. But just in the last 10 years, two mammal species have gone extinct. A bat known as the Christmas Island pipistrelle and a rat, the Bramble K. malamese. More than 200 mammal species and subspecies are critically endangered today. And unfortunately, what goes for mammals goes for just about every other animal group reptiles, amphibians, fish, and even insects. 
extinction rates today and are hundreds of times higher than the background rate. They're so high, the scientists say we're on the edge of a mass extinction. The last mass extinction, which killed the, the dinosaurs 66 million years ago, followed an asteroid striking Earth. Today, the cause of extinction is different. It's logging, poaching, introduced disease, climate change, and overfishing, among others. This time around, the cause of mass extinction is not an asteroid. It's us. What's lost? One way to think of a species, be it an ape or an ant, is to answer to a is the, is an answer is as an answer to a puzzle. How to live on planet Earth. A species ge genome, or all of its DNA, is a sort of book of instructions. When the species dies, that book is lost. We are, in this sense, destroying a library, the library of life. Perhaps by recognizing this, we can begin to imagine creating a different time period, one that preserves the rich and wonderful diversity of life. Animal endangerment and its causes. Living things have been disappearing since the beginning of life on our planet. In fact, most species that have ever lived on Earth are now extinct or no longer living. Extinction can occur naturally as a normal process, or it can be the result of a major event. For example, scientists believe that an asteroid struck Mexico about 65 million years ago. Almost 50% of plant species and 75% of animal species, including the dinosaurs, became extinct. Species are continually disappearing. This is the result of diseases, competition from other species, or natural change in their climate. Scientists have identified five extinction episodes like this before humans existed. When humans became the most powerful species, the extinction rate of other species began to increase dramatically. Species are disappearing faster than they can be created. Therefore, the planet has entered a sixth wave of mass, extinct, mass extinction. Scientists believe this wave is caused by human activity. It is impossible to measure the number of species going extinct because there are millions that have not even been discovered yet. It is thought that amphibians and corals are the animal groups at highest risk of, risk of extinction. About 40% of each group is threatened. About 25% of animals and 13% of birds are at risk. People are endangering species in three ways. Habitat destruction, commercial use of animals and plants, and the introduction of new species into habitats. Human activity has also sped up climate change. If climate change continues at its current level, 25% of all species could be at risk by 2050. Habitat destruction. <clears throat> the destruction of habitats is the main reason species are becoming extinct. Housing. Houses, buildings, farms, and roads sit on what used to be forests, deserts, and wetlands. The pollution from people and our activities also threatens habitats. For example, sewage and chemicals can change rivers and streams that animals depend on. For instance, 46 to 58,000 square miles of forest each year are destroyed worldwide. This is the equivalent of 36 footballs, football fields each minute. Tropical rainforests, home to 50% of all animal and plant species, once occupied 6 million square miles worldwide. Now, only 2.4 million square miles remain. When species habitats become smaller, more species are crowded together. This can cause more competition for fewer resources and space. So, access to food, water, and mates may become limited. Commercial exploitation. Throughout history, animals have been hunted by humans for their meat and to be used to create clothing, medicines, 
bark, and other things. Overhunting has threatened many species, including whales, the black rhinoceros, and the bluefin tuna. Other species are threatened because they are collected or captured as pets or for trading. International treaties outlaw the capture and trade of certain species, but these laws are difficult to carry out. Many endangered species live in very remote places. These places are difficult for law enforcement officers to monitor. Introduced species. Native species have lived in a certain place for a long period of time. They have adapted to the environment, climate, and other species also living there. Introduced species have been brought into an area by humans. This can either be by accident or on purpose. In some cases, these introduced species may not cause harm and may adapt in time. But most often, introduced species throw off ecological balance. They compete with native species for food and shelter. Often introduced species prey on the natural species, native species, and may bring new diseases. When introduced species cause harm, they are called invasive species. More than 40% of threatened or endangered species are at risk because of invasive species. Climate change. People burn fossil fuels such as coal to make electricity. Electricity. This is one way to heat our homes and provide light. We burn oil in the form of gasoline to power our cars. Burning fossil fuels releases carbon dioxide into the air, which traps Earth's heat. The levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere have increased since the 1800s. This is why many countries began using machinery. This is when many countries began using machinery. Earth's temperature is still continuing to increase, which is called global warming. Climate change is a related term. It refers to all major, long-lasting changes in climate. This includes global, global warming, but also severe heat waves and changes in ra rainfall that lead to floods or drought. Climate change threatens different species in many ways. Melting sea ice causes sea levels to rise, which could take over areas where animal and plant species live. Warmer temperatures on land can force animals to move or wake animals too early from hibernation. Often the effects of change, climate change cause a chain reaction. One example is when rising temperatures reduce the algae population in oceans, this harms sea animals that eat algae, which then harms whales that eat these sea animals. Some scientists believe climate change has already contributed to the extinction of one species, the golden toad, a small bright orange amphibian from Central America.